everyone. We're at uh, Tuesday, the 5th, I guess it is, of June. And uh, this is engaging, I mean, equipping heaven dwellers. We are um, embarking on the idea of understanding and experiencing what mandates and blueprints are and engaging and getting mandates and blueprints. We felt to do this in a two or maybe even three part um, series because as we engaged about it, we were led to um, a starting place, which is truly, the I believe, and we believe the right starting place when we talk about getting mandates and blueprints. And so uh, what, what we realized was that the first place in order to receive mandates and blueprints, the first place we get to come to is the place of rest. And I guess this will unfold more as we, you know, share, we different ones of us share about it. So I would just um, give over to Arabella to bring us some, some content here. You may want to put your um, video on Arabella. Sure. Um, I'm just going to pull it up just so people have access to it. So just took some notes today. Let's see here. Oops, let's open this up here. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, thanks. You're welcome. Just simply put, um, we're beginning with part one of beginning and rest. And so you all can read these, but I'll just go over them real quick. Um, first is strive to enter his rest. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest of God, to know and experience it for ourselves, so that no one will fall by the falling, by following the same example of disobedience as those who died in the wilderness. And that's Hebrews 4.11. Um, our work is to believe in him. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Okay, and that's John six twenty-eight through 29. Um, and then there's the scripture about his yoke, taking his yoke upon us. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And fourthly, where are we ruling from? And so we reference the scripture in Ecclesiastes 1.3. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Okay, I'm going to hand this over to, I don't know if it was you, Michelle, or Kathy for right now. Sorry, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, I know. Um, hand it over back to me for a minute. Um, thank you, Arabella. Uh, the thing is that what we're realizing, and, and I know that this is not new for you, but we're talking about, we're talking about tethering and untethering. And that word we've probably heard a lot and engaged it a little bit. If you haven't heard of it, it's very simply the same thing as saying coming out from and being joined to, um, separating from and engaging with or um, disengaging from and engaging into, being loosed from and being set into. But we've been coiling, calling it or coining it and tethering and untethering. And so we realize that before we come into a place of being able to take on a mandate and a blueprint out of heaven, we need to come to a place of untethering from all our own efforts, our own ideas. And simply put, you know, that really brings things to light, such as, okay, um, striving in our own strength, 
reading the scriptures and thinking that it applies, everything applies to us. So um, we need to do all of it. And everything is, is the mandate that we have. Everything in the scriptures is the mandate that we have. And, um, and it lends us to a place of thinking that, well, you know, I, I, I should be praying for everybody and, and I need to pray for everybody who's sick. And if anybody who's sick, uh, I'll pray for them. If anybody needs a word, I'll give it to them. If anybody, what's happening in the world, if what's happening in China, what's happening in Hong Kong or whatever, you know, I need to, I need to pray for this. I need to pray for that. And what has happened is that because we didn't really come into the place of rest and then come into the place of yoking and then come into the place of intimacy, we have defined our own idea of Christianity and we may find ourselves doing all kinds of things that we actually haven't been mandated for or given the blueprint for in heaven. In other words, it's, it's not something that the Lord has mandated us to do, but because it's in the scripture, we think that it's something that we're supposed to do. So whatever we thought we should be and that we should do as Christians and whatever we've been doing in our own strength, whatever striving we've been doing, whatever we've been doing outside of engaging in that place, first of all, of rest with God and coming to that place where we're stopping all those works, it's all useless. And it's a very significant thing. It's, it's a very powerful reality to come to a place of letting go of everything that we thought we should be and we should do and everything that we've just done without really even knowing and just because we saw it's in the scripture and we were exhorted by a preacher, <laughs> you know. And so... Coming to a place of rest means to also come out of and disengage from or untether from all of those things, whether there's patterns in our, our thinking, uh, activities that we've been just participating in doing because we carried away with it, because someone else is doing it, because for whatever reason. But when we look at Jesus, we see that he, he said, I only do what I see my father show me. And I only say what I hear my father tell me. He was so engaged in the mandate and the blueprint he was getting out of intimacy. And there's a heck of a lot of freedom that comes when we let go and we really come to that place of rest. And then we find ourselves zeroed in on mandates and blueprints that we have confident, confidence in because it's come out of that relationship built from the place of rest. And so we felt it was so important that we would really um, start at this place because the surrender of everything as a living sacrifice means I just let go of it all. And when we've been believers for many years, this is quite fun because, <laughs> you know, oftentimes one can be burdened by the things that you felt that you should do. And when you let go, you come to this place, it's actually so nice. And then it begins to become, as Jesus said, you know, it won't be a burden. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And whatever happens then when it's done out of the realms of heaven, it carries the anointing, it carries the, the um, flow of heaven, it carries the power of heaven, it carries the angelic that go along with it. And all of that has to do with those mandates and blueprints that are there for us in heaven. So um, I think that um, we are going to, you know, I, I think we're, we're looking to um, do some engaging for that specific, um, you know, testimony to happen in us today. But uh, Kathy had some personal testimony of her coming to a place of rest that she wanted to share with us. So go ahead, Kath. Yeah, I have got to um, give honor to uh, Ian also, again, because I was listening to one of his earlier teachings, and um, he told a story on himself that he wanted to, um, he wanted to come under the Lordship of Christ, Lordship of Jesus, and so then the Lord had to show him that to be under his Lordship or in his Lordship was was about rest 
And so he had to um, engage rest and, and come to understand what it meant to, to be in rest, to, uh, to actually begin to be a Lord and, and to come under the Yeshua's Lordship. So, um, you know, the, it was several winters ago, falls ago, I guess, when after when I'd listened to that. And uh, one fall, I was praying. I needed hay for my horses and um and tires for my my pickup so i could do this trip i wanted to do so i was praying for hay and tires and um i was praying like lord god i was you know just praying and and one of the places i meet the lord is at the table at the banqueting table now the banqueting table isn't full of food for me it's just abundance it's like everything that i could possibly need or want is on this banqueting table it's really about abundance, not about dinner. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I was sitting at the table with him, and uh, he had me put my hands up on top of the table. And then he put his hands over the top of my hands, and he said, I've got it covered. <laughs> Which was really sweet, because I was stressing, you know, out over it. And uh, he said, I've got it covered. And it, it's been such an awesome place that every time I get anxious about something and I need, I'm, you know, I'm praying for something, as it were, I, I go back to that same place and I put my hands on top of the table. Now, what that meant to me was that um, I come from a family that you're important if you're really busy and you've got lots of stuff going on and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing, 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 doing. You know, so I, so that I have that, this work ethic thing built in. You, you are nobody if you're not doing stuff and uh, being independent and making your own way. So, um, so to put my hands on top of the table like that meant that I couldn't participate. It wasn't about me. I, I, my hands were, I couldn't do stuff. So that, that was really a, a good picture for me. And, uh, I want you to encourage everybody that you'll get your own picture. You know, God will give you a picture for your life that will be really um, meaningful to you as you ponder his rest or how to enter it or what's stopping you from entering into his rest. Um, I, uh, I also received another teaching about rest some years ago. Another one of my mentors had a revelation that God um, put on their heart. They, they were missionaries and they um, always went to church on Sunday. I mean, that's what they did. So this one weekend, the Lord told them to stay home and plant the garden. And um, they got in a lot of trouble with their uh, religious friends for doing this. But the Lord told them to do that. And, and he gave them this whole big long experience about, um, about his rest. I mean, they, they would work all day and pray all night and they weren't tired and, and several things like that. But what he was teaching them was that when they enter, when we enter Yahweh's rest, every day is a Sabbath day. Every day is a Sabbath day. So when we enter into his rest, we're doing his works. And as we do his works, then every day is a Sabbath day. And if he tells you to Sabbath on Tuesday, then Sabbath on Tuesday. And, and if he tells you to, you know, go help somebody or work on Sunday or Saturday, then that's what you need to do. Because, because in his kingdom, man was created on the sixth day. So the very next day was the Sabbath day. Um, in his kingdom, every day is a Sabbath day. They rest. I just love that picture. So that's what I wanted to share. Thanks, Kat. It was interesting to me that you said, when you said that about every day, um, that, that, you know, he created everything in six days and then on the seventh day he rested. I mean, it just sort of like opened up to me. Well, that's how he introduced us. He introduced us right when into the rest, you know. So um, Matt, we were made on the sixth day and in the seventh day he said, this is what it's all about. It's all about rest. <laughs> just rest. rest struck me incredibly was that we were created by God on the Sabbath day. I had never, that had never hit home until now going, wow, 
we were created, man was created on Sabbath, rest. So are right. you saying that the Sabbath is the sixth day? Because man was created on the sixth day, wasn't he? Sixth day and, and then Sabbath. Actually, uh, Lord spoke to me about that. Um, he, he actually rested because he completed making us. So without making us, it wouldn't be, it, we, he wasn't able to reach. But because he made us, in his image and in, in perfection in, in Adam, Adam Cadman, that he was able to rest after he made us. That's how I um, understood because everything was completed after yeah. he made us. That's awesome. That's an awesome picture. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, so that is so exciting because that means, oops, Sorry, that is, oh. <laughs> that's so exciting because that, you know, puts us right there in the place of, uh, I've created my family. <sighs> I can, this is my family. This is a family of rest. This family rests in me. This family lives in rest. <laughs> that's so beautiful. I just love that. You know, you'd really triggered that, uh, Kathy, when you said that to me. I, I just want to thank you for that. And I do want to say that we, we absolutely do honor Ian um, for how he really spearheaded some, you know, mo most of what everybody that is moving in the realms of heaven these days is, um, is, uh, is he spearheaded it. And so honor to him, but we're engaging personally. And um, this is, this is what we're about to in equipping heaven dwellers. So if you have something to contribute, that's wonderful. We want to engage together. Um, we also we just want to facilitate our engaging and growing together. Did you have something to share, Arabella? Well, um, I do have uh, some more, the next phase of what we shared beforehand, um, but I didn't know if we had time, if anyone else had any quick story about, um, or testimony about rest or if we should continue on. Sure, anybody have a testimony? I will share a testimony that goes back actually quite a long um, time. <laughs> before actually engaging in, in heaven, heaven's realms, but it was a place of rest. Um, and oftentimes, you know, this comes out of the uh, performance for acceptance, we all know, where we've performed for acceptance. That's another place where we have not been in the, in the rest. And um, performing for acceptance uh, was definitely there in, in my life. And um, a, lot of, a lot of stress, inward stress from it, tension, you know. Um, but uh, as I began to experience uh, an encounter where um, I it was a deep wound in my life, actually, um, where there had been some blame shifting, but I had actually taken personal blame. In other words, I had made my, I had um, taken false guilt on was such a deep wound but when I when that revelation came and I got free from that it was like it just broke open a whole lot of self um, uh, as I said striving and um, and um, performance for acceptance and I came to a place I was busy involved with something and I just stopped and I said you know I, I can't do this now I just need to take a rest I just need to find myself in rest and so um, that's a testimony I have from, from many years ago. But now that we are actually engaging straight away in heaven, we are finding that's one of the first places, if you have a testimony, that's one of the first places we are, we are finding ourselves being taken most often is into that place of rest. So um, one of the things that helped, um, we, one of the things that helped us see about um, rest 
was um, with three different things. And this is where we would um, move into that, those three things, Arabella. So the three things were, we have been raised up and seated in heavenly places with Christ. It's not something, of course, we know we did. It was done for us. So what that means is we were restored to a place of honor and a place of position and authority um, that we originally were given. And so that's a place of rest to come into your seat of authority in heavenly places. That's a place where you can come in and rest. Another, se- another place of rest is that um, our origin. We come out of the Father. We just talked about that. But before the world was, we were in him. We were in the very essence of his being as part of him, but we were also in the imagination of his heart in the idea of creating us as family, creating a family. So in that very reality, our place of deep rest is that we are in, in, the, in him and were in him in the was and are in the is and in, in, and in the is to come. So there's that rest of that I belong there. And then the other one is um, in the name. We're in the name of him. And that doesn't mean that we use that word. We don't say, uh, may be healed in Jesus' name. That's not really what that means. What it means is that we were brought into, restored into the name. So that's a place of rest because in the name we get our identity. So the name is Yad, He, Vav, He, which is lion, ox, eagle, man. And so when we say that we're in the name, we're basically saying we're in lion, ox, eagle, man, and we're identifying that we are in the image of lion, ox, eagle, man. And that's another true place of rest because it's our true identity where we don't have any more images that we're trying to, you know, create or trying to um, uh, follow. Um, So these were three places of rest that we saw. And we felt that what we could do today was we could take a little time and go into each one of those, take a little moment and go into those three places of rest and then um, maybe share anything that we got out of that. And time permitting, we would go into another engagement. So Arabella was going to take us into those places. Can everyone see it? Hello? Yes. Okay. You can see the scriptures up there? Yes. Okay, great. Let's just go back into here. Okay, so again, just to um, follow up with what Michelle uh, just shared, we thought to meditate on these these facts and um, for a couple minutes at a time. So we just welcome, uh, we just come together acknowledging and meditating and engaging on the fact that right now in this moment and always we are seated in heavenly places.
Okay. And um, we were in him before creation. Kathy, would you like to read the last one? So uh, we were going to uh, see ourselves as being seated in his name. And I understand that King James uses name um, in, um, let's see how I put it, uh, you can also substitute the word nature um, anytime you see in his name because God's nature is declared by his names. And so anytime you see the word in his name, you can also say we're seated in his nature or he's manifesting his nature in us. And so what I was going to do was just um, um, like put some music, sing, sing the yod heh vav heh because that's a really awesome way to enter in or to have to draw the presence around us. So um, you can join in with me. Concentrating on or focusing on each of the different faces that recognize that as you become come to the place where you or we um, um, Where we reflect his image that that image is ours as well and that we um, we also will, Can look like this in fact, it's um, It's it's under it's um, been revealed actually that the reason they had to put a um covering over Moses face was because he had spent so much time with the father that he was that's what he was looking like lion ox eagle man <laughs> and so he uh, kind of scared the people but so um, that can become our image as well and as we're seated in the midst of his nature and character Ooh, he, uh, Hey, 
Yurivale, 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 Yurivale. I just love it because it really draws the presence of God around me. I, when I first started um, understanding about singing his name like this, um, I know that it should be a chant, but I, I can only chant for so long. And so I was singing it however it came to me or however it came out. And then I started worrying about, was it going to be okay or did it have to be done in a certain way? Like chanting like the uh, Hebrews would do. Um, and the Lord let me know that it was okay to have it come out. However, it was okay. However, it came out of me. Thank you, Kathy. That was beautiful. Um, so we thought just to continue on just, um, just really acknowledging and maybe even meditating on the fact that we rule and it's not by might or by power, but by his spirit, uh, Zechariah 4, 6, and um, Isaiah 64, 6, not by our own righteousness, which are really filthy rags, but by his spirit. Can you go into your spirit, in, front, in your spirit man, and look to see what he looks like, what, he, what your spirit man looks like? And can you go and see him uh, seated somewhere in the heavens? And everybody might have a different picture, or the picture might change depending on um, what you're um, praying into at the time. But see if you can use your spirit man to see, uh, use your spiritual eyes to see what your spirit script man looks like. Also in this place of rest, let's just engage um, what, that, what that place of rest is and, and see what that is for you. Um, I was just getting that when we were looking into the um, seats that we seated in, I began to see that every seat in heaven is in a place of rest. There's, there's no... There's no government in heaven that's not in rest. So every seat we might sit in, in any place in heaven, even if we're invited to a banqueting table or whatever, we're invited into wisdom's um, place on our heights and into where she has her table set. Every seat that we sit in is in rest, as a place of rest. All of heaven functions in rest. Mm. So... Whatever you can, however you would continue just for a few minutes to engage rest for yourself personally. Um, there's also, you could go in also through the portal of Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. It, whichever way you would just 
be, be, feeling, be led today to just gauge for, engage for a few more minutes and rest and experience rest. What does it feel like? What are you hearing? What are you sensing? Where are you? <laughs> You may have to lay something down. You may have to, God may speak to you about mm -hmm. about releasing something or letting something go that you're striving over. Mm -hmm. Kathy, I missed what you had just said somehow. Okay, um, I just said that uh, Yahweh may have may point out something to you that you're striving over, and there may be something that you need to lay down um, or let go or release, release into Him. Um, there's a reason that verse is about casting our cares upon Yeshua, because um, because He, that's what He went to the cross for, wasn't it? To deal with all that. So. Um, we're, I think we're really good at having a burden and putting it at the cross and then picking it back up and walking off with it. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, it's a good place for him to speak to us about what's going on in our minds. I've been pondering on Psalm 23 and it seems to me that you really need to look at that from the point of view of a sheep. And since not everybody has sheep anymore, um, I think that's kind of interesting. But, um, you know, if Yahweh is my shepherd, then I lack not. And it's really about the great husband, about him being a husband man, um, mm -hmm. because he is providing all the needs of the sheep. They have uh, clean water, um, good food, and a place of rest because sheep can easily get frightened um, by predators. So the shepherd keeps them safe from predators and um, keeps them in a place where they, they can um, graze and uh, the kind of food that they're designed to eat and um, have pure water to drink and then so and then he just um as he meets their needs the, the husband man the shepherd then he gets to uh reap the benefits of what the sheep uh bring bring to him they provided wool for clothing they provided meat and um there's probably other things but those are the only two that come to mind right now and 
anyway, it's just such a beautiful picture. I just love Psalm 23. Another thing that's really awesome about Psalm 23 is if you notice, um, it God or the shepherd is doing it all. He provides, he takes them to the place of rest, um, safety. He finds them water. He finds them uh, things, the right kind of food to eat. He prepares a banqueting table in their face, in the midst of their enemies, in the midst of their tribulators. And, um, you know, even if a, sh a sheep or me goes astray, um, his rod and his staff are still there to protect us. And um, he leads us in paths of righteousness for his nature's sake. And I was, you know, thought, well, what does that mean? That one version said, well-worn paths of righteousness. And uh, if you ever heard the song, The Via Della Rosa, it's all about Jesus going to the cross. And, and uh, the Lord showed me one day that um, Via Della Rosa was a path of righteousness for his namesake. So we think that a path of righteousness will always be um, easy and feel good, but it doesn't always feel good. <laughs> I'm sure that was a painful process. But it was still a path of righteousness, and, and Yahweh was with him in it. And that end result, the sheep doesn't really have to do anything but eat and sleep and drink water. And uh, the end result is that we get to tabernacle with Yahweh forever, Olam. <laughs> well, from age to age, we get to tabernacle with Yahweh, Olam. I just love that passage. Well, as we come out of this time, um, we move into a place of realizing that out of the place of rest, we go into the place of yoking with Yeshua, into this place where the yoke is easy and the burden is light. We come into governmental relationship with Yeshua, and then we come into marriage union. And... Out of that marriage union, desire then is born. We have desires, and that leads to the engaging into mandates and blueprints that are heaven's mandates and blueprints.
So if anybody would like to share anything of your testimony of what you've engaged, now would be a great time. I just want to add in, um, we're no longer paging him, you know, calling him on the phone, mm. looking for the next answer that we truly are abiding in him and in him we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. Well, I found it, I think the whole thing was restful. At the end, when you said find your own place, it's for me, it's um the my abiding place is um it's it's sort of akin to what happened on our king sons it, it's inside of him and it's been that way that's how i always feel is that he's kind of my safe place to be in and the way he puts it is to be in christ so i step into him and that's he's my secret place he's my abiding place i'm at rest when i'm in him Thanks, Jeanette. Anyone else? Okay, well, one of the things that obviously we know, I'll just put, sorry, I'll just put my video back on. One of the things that obviously we know is that whatever we bring needs to be, um, you know, you need to take it and see the truth of it and, and, and engage it because these were just um, specific um, opportunities for us to then really assess because it takes time to um, come to uh, places of, you know, perhaps untethering and tethering. But the understanding that we're untethering to a place of rest and tethering into that yoke and into that union is, 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 is the understanding. But how that all works out for us would involve personal times um, to a place where we see that, yeah, I'm no longer... I'm no longer striving. And you may want to engage in the court of heaven on that where um, you know, there's a, an, a place to come to with him where you see to it that those things that have been um, tethering you in a wrong way are untethered. And sometimes it's to do with the soul and, and um, not being in proper alignment with the spirit. Um, so that's, an, that's also a part to untether from where the soul is dominating in any way over the spirit, which is, and quenching the spirit. So I hope this has been uh, helpful for you and we just would appreciate any feedback. You're welcome to turn your cameras back on. I'm gonna turn the video off. We really would again appreciate any feedback, especially from those also who have just been um, engaging by watching the video. Um, thank you.